You often hear the phrase, ghosts of the forest or phantoms of the forest to describe albino redwoods. Now, science has not caught up with this. We need somebody to really jump on this, take the genetics, do some work, and let's, let's find out what this is about. I'm Barry Starr, and I'm the director of Stanford at the Tech. I write for Quest, and one of the blogs that came up was about albino redwoods, and I thought it would be cool to figure out what's going on there. And I contacted the chair of the Department of Genetics at Stanford, and he said, someone in my lab, Gia, has been wanting to work on redwoods for a while. And so this ended up being the kind of a perfect way to get into this problem of, of what is redwood DNA like, because now we have a specific problem we can answer. Why are these redwoods albinos? <laughs> I'm Gia Yuskirchen, and I'm the director of DNA sequencing in the genetics department at Stanford University School of Medicine. We're interested in the redwood genome for a variety of reasons, and we thought it was about time to study it in depth and from this new genomics angle. So we're here collecting samples, and we're looking at what's known in genetics as wild-type tree, or what you might define as genetically normal. And then also there's a set of interesting mutants here at Henry Cal State Park known as albino mutants. So we're interested in both of these. So this one looks perfect. The redwood genome is thought to be particularly difficult. It's hexaploid, so six copies of each chromosome. It's probably five to ten times the size of the human genome. It has a lot of repetitive sequence, which makes it difficult to assemble. But we're going to see what we can do with what we have. Okay. So when, and how come we're just taking the ends instead of the whole thing? Uh, I think this will probably give us more DNA compounds. Uh, perfect. Is that good? Down right there. Okay. Oop. Oop. Got it. It actually has this sort of gambling element because whenever you reach into a genome, you're never really sure what you're going to pull out. So once we get back to the lab, what we have to do is take the samples, break them open, pull out the DNA, and then we're going to run them through various chemical reactions to try and read the DNA sequence. And the way it'll work is we'll end up reading small bits of of the sequence. And then you have to kind of, to figure it all out, you have to kind of get overlapping sequences of these small bits and you can kind of get a, the whole genome that way. It's going to be tricky, but I think it'll be doable. And I want you to, one of us has to climb up there. <laughs> <laughs> I nominate you. <laughs> it's just a very good puzzle. There's probably endless of questions that you could ask, and it's different than the other genomes that have been studied before. So I don't think it'll be easy, but I think it'll be fun and worthwhile project. We want to find out a lot of things. So, but the first thing we want to find out is if they are clonal. Are they really just clones of each other? And uh, that's easier than a lot of the other things to do, and we might have a pretty quick answer for that. Uh, the next thing we'd like to do is figure out why they're albino. We're going to try and check a few things that are kind of known about why plants are sometimes albinos, and maybe we can check that quickly in the redwood. But then overall, we really want to figure out what is the DNA of the redwood? What can it tell us about how redwoods have adapted to its environment? How has it survived so long? Was it really a, a fusion of two different species back in prehistoric times? We can learn so much by figuring out the DNA of a redwood. So we're taking small samples, a few hundred milligrams, just basically the, the length of your thumb tip, lice the cells, extract the DNA, shear it into small pieces, and sequence it um, in 100 base pair, roughly, fragments. And we'll have millions of these fragments, which will assemble into larger pieces, which we'll call contigs. So we're ready to start our sequencing run. The, this will be finished in 10 days. After that, the information will go over to the bioinformaticists, who are computer or computational biologists. They will take the raw sequence and, I would say magically, but it's actually a lot of work, transform it or begin to transform it into the redwood genome sequence. 
They've often called this the genome from hell because it's a large genome. It has a lot of repetitive sequence, which makes, means you can't precisely locate it to just one position in the genome. And furthermore, it's hexaploid, but not only is it hexaploid, but within the six sets of chromosomes, it's thought that not all six chromosomes are equal, so there's actually a, even more work to do with the assembly. So we really have our work cut out for us. Albino redwoods are these beautiful white trees in the redwood forest that scientists have known about for a hundred years and don't, haven't figured out why they're albino. And so we're going to try and figure that out. And in the process, for the first time, we're going to actually figure out the redwood genome and how a redwood tree works. Uh, it's going to be great research, but it's going to take a couple of years to figure it out.